Today we're going to discuss a case of a person who had multiple parathyroid adenomas and hyperparathyroidism. I'm Dr. Bob Eklar, I'm from Center for Advanced Parathyroid Surgery. This is an interesting case. 48 year old gentleman who complains of fatigue, acid reflux, back pain. Um, he has osteopenia, so uh, during the workup of the osteopenia, being that it's, he's a little too young for osteopenia, they found that his PTH was elevated at about 174. So they checked their calcium, the calcium was in the normal range, but on the high side of normal. And he, they looked at his calcium back in time and his calciums gradually were rising up the numbers coming, coming up to the upper end of normal. He existed in the lower end of normal, but because it was in the normal range, nobody paid attention to it. Vitamin D levels were normal. And when and he came to me, I went through his whole history. I looked at his numbers, the cal old calcium numbers, the new numbers, the PTHs. I repeated the labs to confirm the diagnosis. I looked at for other possible causes of elevated PTH, magnesium, def magnesium deficiency, vitamin D deficiency, malabsorption, kidney malfunction causing leakage of calcium and so on, and none of them existed. I did an ultrasound for him, which showed a right inferior adenoma which you can see in this image. So in this image, this is the thyroid gland. And this is a clear parathyroid. And then there's this other lesion next to it, which looks suspect. And I made a notation that I will look at that lesion during surgery. So he had surgery, um, a minimally invasive surgery under local anesthesia with surgeon. So I gave him a cervical nerve block, which made this whole side of the neck numb and then he was breathing on his own uh, but he did get some sedation so he was sleeping breathing on his own and fully numb on the neck i went inside uh, found the vocal cord nerve and once i the vocal cord nerve was very clear and safe i was able to take out the first the bigger parathyroid and then immediately next to it i could see two other lesions one which was a little bit smaller and then the last one which was much smaller but all of them which had this brownish coloration to them right which you see in the parts of these adenomas that were removed and before removing any of them we checked pth which came back at 203 and at 5 10 and 15 minutes after removing these three which were all right immediately adjacent to each other in the lower part of the thyroid lobe uh, next to the thyroid lobe Afterwards, at 5, 10, and 15 minutes, the PTH levels came down from 203 to 49, 36, and 25 at 5, 10, and 15 minutes, which indicated that the remaining glands in this person, the two glands on the opposite side, were working perfectly. No, they were not overworking, so it confirmed the success of the procedure during the surgery. Um, when we sent the specimens to the pathologist, the pathologist was able to confirm that all of these parathyroids were hypercellular, were densely cellular parathyroids, very much like a tumor would be. At one month after surgery, we checked the calcium, which came down to 9.4, and PTH, which was 48. And at 11 months, calcium was a little bit higher, but PTH lower. At two years, calcium at 9.5, PTH of 39, vitamin D, 58, normal. And so I always try to do a quality of life questionnaire for the patients before surgery and after. These quality of life surveys are interesting because the higher the number, the less symptoms they have. So zero in here means they always have a symptom. Four means they never have symptoms, right? So this is before surgery. The score is 71. And you can see that there's a whole bunch of things, a bunch of symptoms that are sometimes there uh, sometimes not right now at six months after surgery the score went up a little bit um, the hair loss was not dramatically better but some of the items on there were had improved at one year it went up to 78 so more improvement the hair loss was better and everything else was better at two year the numbers shot up to 84 so the improvement was dramatic by two years so this is to say that when you have hyperparathyroidism, your symptom improvement continues to go on even at two years after surgery, sometimes even longer. So you have to persist. You have to take care of yourself. You have to feed, eat well, exercise well, force your body 
to get back to a very balanced state as it relates to the calcium system. If you're interested in clear parathyroid information and minimally invasive approaches to treat parathyroid disease, visit us at parathyroid.net. If you found this video helpful, please subscribe, follow us, and please ask me questions so I can get, it'll help me make more videos that can help you out ultimately. Be well.